I'm Dr. Dan and today we're discussing a little bit about uh, validity of neurotransmitter testing and I think we're going to have to do this in two parts because it does get a little lengthy so I'm going to give you kind of a summary here and then I'll go into a little bit more detail on, uh, on part two if you if you like some more information but basically you know I've read some of the complaints about uh, urine testing for uh, test to see what uh, your neurotransmitters are and what they should be and I understand that, and I think I'll go into more details on that in part two. But to put it this way, um, the proper way of determining whether this is valid or not is by first seeing what is normal. And so this is what Dr. Kellerman did, you know, when he was studying neurotransmitters. You know, we started with people who are, who are happy and healthy. No depression, no anxiety, no panic attacks, you know, there no insomnia, migraine headaches, or anything else that's oftentimes associated with abnormal neurotransmitters. And when he tested these people, what he found that these uh, neurotransmitter breakdown products in the urine were all about the same. So he was able to establish what he would call an ideal range for these. And now this is what we do with all types of blood testing, for example. You know, you don't look at um, what, what you think should happen, you look at what is happening uh, based on healthy people. So healthy people tend to have a cholesterol in this range, they tend to have glucose in this range, and potassium in this range. And when you look at it that way, you don't get confused. If you start to think backwards in your, in your physiology, and try to determine what should be, then you're going to be in trouble. But you need to look at what is in healthy people, and that's what he did. So then he found that if he took a person who did have anxiety attacks, or, or a panic disorder or depression or something, and they looked at those profiles and noticed that, well, they're not, every depressed person does not have the same profile, but they certainly are different than the ideal profile that he saw in the healthy people. And as he began to add neurotransmitters, into uh, you know neurotransmitter support into the into the people who have a compromised system, he noticed that they started to feel better too. So the bottom line here is that is that if you think of this in a proper way, you won't get lost, you won't get confused, and you just you have to start with what is what's happening in normal healthy people, and then go from there. Now what we've noticed this we've been testing and treating people for about uh, ten years and we've seen absolutely predictable results with this and if we you know we look at the profile and we don't try to diagnose what their condition is by the profile because like I said if you have two people with anxiety they're probably going to have different profiles but as you start to bring that profile back into normal that anxiety quiets down and we've been using this in our family friends and of course hundreds of clients over the years so I can tell you that regardless of what you might read, that if this is done properly, it does work and it is predictable and reliable. So again, in part two, um, I'll cover a few more details and more specifics about, uh, about, the, about these concepts. But that's the basic overview. So thanks a lot for listening and hopefully that was helpful.